It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Saints and the Hawks, and it's coming up next. We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the great northwest city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the Twelves. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the New Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go from Seattle. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here come the Saints for their opening drive. And leading them out there, their 6'5 quarterback. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do, lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. First carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second and six. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. midfield and inside the 45. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Nice methodical opening drive here. They're already into field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people like to take a shot in this part of the field. But at the same time, as methodical as they've been, they might want to run the ball a little bit here too. And just on the outskirts of the red zone, they have options now. Either way, though, they've come out with a purpose. Manning now on first down. Going for it all. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball who just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now, we had a guy who made the catch. They tried to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Again, they'll throw with Manning. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Let's go, baby. First and goal. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate. Got the ball downfield, gave nice chunks of yardage. But now, in 
this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, it has to be pinpoint here. Uh, so I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Alvin Kamara, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Saints take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Extra point right down the middle, and it's now a 7-0 game. So this drive spans seven plays, and the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here come the Seahawks and their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. And they'll be led out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering some I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got one to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Breeze to throw. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. And yes, they want the points, so they want to climb the penalty, no question there. You don't think they spent a couple of seconds mulling over with the penalty? I don't even know why they asked the sidewalk. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, take the points and keep moving. A try here for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7 7. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Chalk of the 20. Oh, New Orleans. 
Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. three yards, second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And to give this time to the tailback, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down Let's there. Go, Let's go! He's down there. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Throwing is Manning toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. To throw is Manning. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Let's go. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get an advantage that way. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Shotgun now for Manning. In the hands of Kamara. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Seven, seven, our score after one. The Saints with the football here to begin quarter number two, as they've got it with a first and 10. running back and brought down but not before they're inside the 25 but they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate for the last one found the spot and picked up nice yardage didn't he and now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone Missed 
misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. To throw, it's Manning. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Into the red zone now, Manning. And his throw here is incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And that bring up second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Here's second and ten. From the gun, it's Manning. They'll get this out to Kamara. Touchdown, Saints! Alvin Kamara. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Saints have taken the lead. Let's go. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. The extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 14 to 7. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead out now, following the touchdown to kick. Taken in at the three. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game. But just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me. We'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Big hold of the 30. And all the way up to the 35-yard line. First play of the drive, a first down run. That's a trip for whichever way you want to go. Do you come right back and run the football again because you've got them on their heels? Or do you play chess match with them, break tendency, and go play action and go for the big shot? Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Wiggles free. And a juke this time. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From midfield, here's Breeze. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And that 
That's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. down as Breeze. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Alexander. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. We've hit the two minute mark in the second quarter. 14 to seven. Reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with the referee. on that last play and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down throwing now is Breeze and this pass broken up and the contact well timed there and now fourth down from a defensive perspective they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football there's pressure on the quarterback they were getting after him and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion So out now is the Seattle field goal team. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a good kick there. They put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the throw. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either about the time, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll just take a seat in the driver to get at the 25 yard line. Here we go. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes, but right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. On first down, Manning. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. 
Throwing again on second and ten. Manning. And Thomas has it. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Throwing now is Manning. And Graham's got it, complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. and 10. Here's Manning. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And they'll have it in the red Let's zone go. before he crosses over out of bounds. Yeah, big play there. And when you have a running back that you can use like a wide receiver, when he has that kind of versatility, you do as they did there. Get him out of the backfield and give those defensive backs something else to worry about. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. The connection made, it's Graham. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. They scored touchdowns on drives one and two, and now they're trying to make it a perfect three for three to start. Now Manning again. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. And they ran just a little underneath route here on first and goal, but there's really not a whole lot of room to operate this close to the goal line. He's just not able to get loose after the catch. On second and goal, Manning. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Alvin Kamara on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Saints now add six to their lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes it a 21 to 10 game. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range.
So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. There's Breeze. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. On second down now, it's Warner. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. So we have reached halftime with... All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. trailing but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter this will be fielded inside the five and a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. And the Bucks ready to go here to begin the third quarter and right out of the gate they face what you think could be a pretty important drive I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start calling back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll start the third quarter here on the ground. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. 43 yards on the ground for him so far. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. They'll keep it on the ground. Warner, and down he'll go at the 25. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Breeze now on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. But it's not been the best game for him. But he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. To throw again on second down. Breeze, and he finds his tight end, Graham. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot, letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Shotgun now for Breeze. That's complete to D.K. Metcalf. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Oh, 
So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Now Breeze. This one into the hands of Largent. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. the inside handoff and he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36 now after the running play we've got a man down on the field while the training staff takes a peek we'll take a break there it's incomplete another incompletion with that one he's just 7 of 14 throwing the football 50 percent typically not going to get it done is it and let's just make it simple and that's exactly why they trail now we sit in quarter number three out in seattle a second and ten now breeze now he's got large and complete here over the middle and this is going to be a good first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 21. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. 51 yards rushing for him now to this point. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Three yards remain for second down. Come get some. Come on here. Come get some. They'll keep it on the ground. Warner. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now a give right side. It's Warner, and he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Breeze is going to throw. Now Breeze lost the football. Boom! That's how we do it. That's how we do it. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation.
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. you got to be careful right here. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one-score game. First and ten here. To throw is Manning. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on a third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Here's Manning to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Graham. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards. Now it's third and five. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop. Balls out of his hands right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. Working from the gun, Manning. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep blow with the clock running down. But to no avail as time will expire on this third quarter of play. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. As we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Seahawks football first and ten. And we will get another look at Seattle's offense. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. First and ten, here's Breeze. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. So they'll come up first and ten now from the 33. On play action, it's Breeze. And Graham on the ground. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the gun, it's Breeze. Able to find his target here, Largent. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down.
Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 36. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. They'll run on first down. It's Alexander, and this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. To throw, it's Breeze. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard you receive. Oh no, he lost the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Now Breeze got to have this one. And left side here, it's Graham. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Fourth go, quarter, man. down Let's to the go. final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Big hole up the middle. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. And now all of a sudden, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit? Yeah, a little bit, because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. To throw is Breeze. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. A great effort there. There to make the grab. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. And touchdown and congratulations and zero relaxation ahead of them, right? Way too much time on the clock for them to start celebrating. Part one is done, but now on the sideline, you already see them scrambling down there. They're getting those defensive guys ready. Yes, you have to get those guys ready, and you also have to talk to your special teams guys. Make sure the kickoff is exactly what you want and cover it well. Breeze to throw. And he's going to be taken down. It's a sack, and they fail on a try for two. I think we can figure out why they went for two there, right? Up one, you want to make it a field goal difference, if at all possible. They didn't get it. Now they've got to play some defense down the stretch. Yeah, not much margin for error now for your D. They just have to get it into range.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. To return it, Alvin Kamara. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Let's go! So all eyes on the Saints offense. Down 22-21. Less than 90 seconds to go. And they need about 35 yards to get in range for a winner as they come up on first down. out of bounds just shy of the 45 and they got exactly what they wanted there out route catch get out of bounds stop the clock and I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation you want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run so I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle an out route that, that's not the way you're supposed to play it Manning to throw. It's complete, Kamara. That catch good for only a couple. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. There's a running back who was a receiver on the play. I think he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a the toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Now Manning. off the mark incomplete couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime and because of that really not many places to throw the football if any and typically what would you want to do against that dime run the football you want to run the ball but you can't do it in this situation not nearly enough time on the clock you have to really navigate it's a tough defense presented against you to throw is Manning they'll set up the screen now to Camara. And they'll get this across the midfield strike, but still winding up short of the first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. It would appear Sean Payton's made the decision here. They would go for it on fourth. Now Manning, got to have this one. And Graham's got it, complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Back to throw. He's going to air one out. Got a man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. A big play that time through the air. 35 yards. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. He'll look to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone inbounds, get them on the ground. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Now they try the right side here. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. An incompletion, now a short pickup. That's not going to do it. Yeah, you've got to get to the line of scrimmage quickly, get set up, and aim downfield. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. For the lead, here's 
It's third and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And now here comes their final timeout. As they take it with eight ticks remaining. Keep playing. So this is certainly a tough test here in the early career of the rookie kicker. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. So this is certainly a tough test here in the early career of the rookie kicker. His first attempt of the afternoon, and it's for the win. And his kick here is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And you know, in an era of cost-cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams, and in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street-free agent out there or a solid pro like this? Answer's pretty evident to me. Morst and the punter out to kick it off. This will be fielded inside the five. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Final try here for Breeze. Catch is made by Metcalf. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot.